Hello lovelies, Shani here from Australia. I'm going to show you really as quick as I can um, how I made this super cute way to goat card using the way to goat stamp set and also the give it a whirl dies and I don't know if many of you have seen it I've it caught my eye immediately I, I knew I had to have it and it, look, look at all the pieces so many pieces but that's okay hi Victoria thank you love and so this is the bundle it's Stella birthday now this is probably why it didn't excite everyone because not everyone's into space kids and um, if you don't have children or have a need for that, even though the dog is super cute and the spaceship and the planets, I decided to get the lot anyway. And I'm glad I did because I think I'm gonna have a bit of fun with it. But you don't have to. Now, the dies come in a package, the normal package, you know, that we get. And I often put them onto magnets and put them in the, in the stamp set on a magnet. Because there's two lot, I decided this time to put them in their own case. And I've just used the, the um, cover, sorry about the glare, in the case as well. And the other, I've, I, it is adhesive, I do stick it on, but I haven't done it because I've only just opened, I've had this set since the new catalogue launch, but I haven't done anything. So today is my first day. I also always, 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 before I pull my dies apart, I, photocopy them straight in the photocopier off that paper that they come on so I know exactly what I've got and how they sit and that way if something goes missing and I don't know where it's from I can go back to that photocopy so that's a little tip anyway I'll show you I've I've not really there's no instructions <laughs> that come with this so we I just fluffed it out and my tip to you is die cut everything and have a look at it and play with it so that's the template that's this bit here and that's quite essential and it has this beautiful stitched edging around it which is really lovely and a hole which is of course your center point for your whole mechanism so that's essential so just that gives you an idea of the size that's gonna fit on your card base. Now in Australia, our card bases are this big, so this will sit, as you can see, quite easily and happily over the top. And I'm sure it's perfect for the US as well. Their card sizes are shorter and fatter than ours, so that, that won't be a problem for them either, because that's who designed it, obviously. And also, in your die kit your essential pieces well I think your essential pieces is obviously this frame this piece the circular and you get four different shapes so you get this shape rectangular circle and a heart and what I did is I cut out all four and that way you know what's going to fit in those in those shapes so for example i know i knew that was going to fit because i chose a circle i could fit a goat all the fonts i could fit the tin can i could fit the face of the goat i can fit that and there's other stamp sets you can use so count me in is another one you could use a different shape. It just gives you a guide what what will fit. Another another stamp set is Party Puffins. Again, you know you're going to fit a bit of them in. I've got other ways and ideas how to make them work and fit for you with a piece of acetate. Um, I'll explain that in another tutorial. So it's it's quite it's quite good. And of course with the the Stella birthday, you know, you know it's designed for that, so you know it's going to fit. So that's just a tip. 
keep that, keep that maybe in your die set and that's gonna save you a lot of time because it can also tell you what words will fit in there. So that's a little tip from me. The other cute little thing in here is this tiny little arrow um, twin set. And I'll show you, that's what they are. They cut out these tiny arrows. So not everyone's gonna expect a rotating card. So a little arrow can help. Tiny, but useful. There's more arrows in here as well. There's these little ones. Now, I haven't used them yet, but I did die cut them out to show you and myself. They actually do pierce through the paper and have an impression. So I'm guessing that they will fit if you, if you hand cut that out or when you cut on your card, you could actually put that die. Give me a minute. You could put that die there and the arrow would be saying to turn, if you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, that's not an issue for now. There's gorgeous clouds, which is another reason to get this die set because how often do we get gorgeous clouds? Never. So they're beautiful. You've got hearts, a circle, scalloped circle so that cuts out a whole circle with the scalloping around it that's gorgeous stars some little dots or planets and um, a, a um, label die or um, font so there's quite a lot in there and even if you don't want to get the spacemen space children <laughs> this is really good this is fun so I'll, I'll show you what I did today, this morning, playing with this, because my beautiful team came on the weekend and um, this is one of the things they wanted to have a play with. And I thought, well, let's do a basic one first. Well, let's me do a basic one first and build it up because then your imagination goes wild. Because you can do your card sideways with the spinner here. You, could, you can put this circle anywhere you want all the other shapes but so I've just stuck with the basics I'll show you how I did it first things first I cut out a card base so I've got my card base and I'm going to basically do the same scene so I've got some what am I using balmy blue I'm just using this as a template now I'm not going to stick it on some balmy blue and some pizzazz how can I forget that's my favorite so basically this is going to just determine the size so you decide how much sky you want and how much grass or land you want you don't have to have it cut exact these is this is obviously roughly a six by four or a bit smaller piece but it doesn't matter I'm not fussing about that right now I'm doing a class Wednesday and that's when I'll get particular how much I cut to save paper. But for now, just for me to muck around, I'll, this is fine. So I'm just going to attach that to that. Let's have a look. It's roughly, roughly the same. And that's all you need to do for now. This is the template. This will cut out all these other pieces. Okay. So I'm just going to put that through the cutter. Bear with me. You can look at that and have some elevator music while I cut. I'll be very quick. Okay. So what we've got now is... So that bit can be saved for something later. This bit can go in the bin. And you've got your template with the little hole. Now, a lot of people were complaining apparently about this line. That doesn't bother me. I'm over that. I, I don't. It's not even an issue. Um, it's it's a handmade card. I don't think you, there are ways to avoid it. I could explain it, but I don't think I will at this stage on this on this tutorial. This is a basic tutorial, so you can see that'll fit really easily and happily on your card. Now, 
Another thing people were saying, or I noticed watching people turn theirs, they couldn't get their little fingers in here to turn their little cog. So I've actually cut a hole, a hole, a semicircle out. Now these have retired these punches, circle punches. This is a one, one and three eighths. I don't know if you can get the angle. Well, they are one and three eighths, okay? It doesn't have to be that one. And I, I do this now before I forget to do it, you see. You want to centre your, you don't have to, but I sort of want to, centre that as much as I can. Put that in, and that's the whole card base. So there's two sheets there. I'm going to put my punch in. Now that's exactly the same. Can you see it's exactly the same size almost? You can use a die. If you don't have a punch, use a die, a circle die. You'll have to put it through a few times because it's double the thickness, but you will still get, oh, hi, Shivengi. Thank you, love. So that'll give you, I, well, I, I tested this card out on my hubby with his big man hands and he's trying to do this. <laughs> I go, just use your fingertip, love. So, uh, but my daughter instantly did it. You know, she instantly did that. But some people will still want to do this. So that actually gives you more leverage and, and movement. So that's done, that's done on there. Okay, now we can put the base card away for a minute. Don't need that anymore. The next thing we'll have to do is you've got your cog. Look at that, it's got a little, it's been used now. It's got a, so it's got a hole in the middle, which obviously lines up with that hole. So we put through some paper. I have done that already to save time and it's come out here. Now you can see this cog, whoopsies, Ooh, I'm gonna lose my dies. Hang on, I've got them balanced up on something silly. There's three sections, so that means three photos, or three photos, three images. You can do more, you can have a continuous flow, but if you wanna have that nice clean gap between each one, that's the space you have. So, if you can't, maybe can or can't see it on here, I don't know if you can, but there's actually a soft impression of these metal marks. So I can actually see, except for that one, where to stamp. Now, if you can't see where to stamp, go over with your pencil and just lightly give yourself a guide. And obviously this gets rubbed out after. And that way, you know exactly your limit of where you can stamp to get the maximum effect from your card. So that's, that's one thing. Um, I've, with those clouds I showed you earlier, I've cut out three clouds just in white. I'm not gonna color them, it's a very simple card. I've also stamped and fussy cut out this goat and this happy little soul. And so they're here, there they are. All cut out, ready to go. And because there's, there's no dies for this, lovies, you're going to have to fussy cut that one. I, because I wanted a simple, easy card, I've actually just chosen really basic colouring in with my stamp and blends. This is what I've decided to use. Goats can be any colour, as you know, they're like horses. <laughs> Goats are not like horses, but the colours can be. So I've used for this. For this card, these are the colours I've used. Granny Green, Light Cherry Cobbler, Dark Mango Melody, Light So Saffron, and Grey Granite Light and Dark. Now, again, that's no set and hard rule. I just happened to find the Grey Granite. I was looking for a grey. Grey Granite was the quickest one. So he's coloured in already, would you believe, and he's not. I want them to be white goats with a touch of grey. So I used the dark grey on the short side not the long brush end and all I did because I just want to give him some some life was went over all the edging with the stamp and blend and as you can see it's it's just a sketchy color it's, it's there's no right or wrong to this you can spend hours coloring this in if you want to if that's what makes you happy you can do that. Some people are amazing colour ringers. 
I like to sometimes, but when it's a technique card, I think just get it done. There we go. Look at that. Didn't even take me a minute. And the cherry cobbler I did for the flower because red always pops with your basic primary colours, blue and well we've got blue and green. And although green's not a primary, is it? Um, Mango Melody wasn't used for that. So what did I use? Oh, Granny Green, I'm not thinking. So a little bit of Granny Green. Okay. So that's all we've got for there for now. Now I'm going to do some stamping on here. Um, many of you know that I always use early espresso instead of black. I just find it easier to clean. It's juicier, it stamps better. I just love it. It's just better. It rocks. And I don't have any problem with bleeding when I do the um, colouring in. So, now this is the fun bit. You've got to remember where this hole is going to be. So I'm going to do it the same spot. I'll show you where I'm going to put the hole, uh, the circle. But it's going to be upright. So when we stamp on this, we want to make sure that that cog is facing. So I don't know if you can see, see that. That's where we, we want to stamp that way because that's where you'll be looking. So we'll start in the order that the card does it. I'm just going to stamp that right in the middle. You've got your cake. I'm going to turn it. Now I didn't show you this where I got the cake. I got the cake from the penguin. Party Puffins, sorry, Puffins. Okay, that's where I got the cake. So the cake's going to go next in the middle. There we go. And then we'll turn it one more time. And we've got, but I ate it. I think that's really funny. Hubby thought it was funny. Okay. The other little... We'll colour, well, we'll just colour this and while we've got it all out. So, how, what did I colour that? I coloured the icing in the red, again, the cobbler, cherry cobbler, just to match the flower in the goat's mouth. Sometimes the simpler the colours, the more effective the card can be if you keep continuing with the same colours. Mango Melody for candles because I wanted them super bright the light grey granite for the cake plate I've never seen a grey plate but everything else is just gives it a bit of something and the cake I did originally leave plain white but it, I thought it needed a bit more so I just did it in a so saffron Colour. Just a soft colour. Cakes are any colour these days, aren't they? They're just any colour. So that's the only colouring in. Now before we forget, we better remember to rub out everything. Something I would forget. And that would be virtually impossible to do once you've got it in situ. <laughs> I can imagine I'd do that. So we'll just rub all that out. Okay. There we go. So that is now, that's ready. Got that element ready. And we've got this piece to play with. So you can choose the shape, like I said, any of these shapes, if that fits. Oh, I can't pick it up. Silly fingernails. Okay. Um, this you could try it to fit any shape. So if you spin it, there's a little mark there, you can see that shape fits as well. Not so much that one. Oh, no, see it won't fit there. Heart shape, if you're feeling lovey, that would fit. So this is a great template. You should make that. Okay. I'm going to do... Why don't we do this... I don't know what that shape is. Pie. Let's do the pie shape. Because we can. 
And just to show you that it can be done, because we know it fits. We know it fits, we've tried it. So this has a little circle. This will not cut a circle. All that'll do is leave a slight impression on the paper. And what you need to do is line up that circle there with the existing circle, okay? And work out exactly where you want your, now I've cut this, I've stamped this to be upright, so we want this upright. You can use washi tape to hold it down or just be really, really careful when you die cut it. Because it's double thickness, I put it through twice. So bear with me again while I just cut that. Okay, so we've got a little shape there, which we don't need. We can cut that and a die. Okay, so we'll put him away for a minute. Let's see if it works. Okay, grab a round or square brad. Now, I'm using up the popular brads in here are going to be the tiny real round ones. Who wants a big blobby square one? Well, I do because it's stronger and thicker and we're going to cover it anyway. You will not see it. So let's just put that through there and make sure this works. Cake, yes. Message, gorgeous. And other message, right. Now before we close that over, it does help to have a little extra bit of padding to help mechanic. This is when the layering circle dies or framelits as they were once called come in. You can also use, if you don't have these, you can also use this. Or, look at the mess I'm making. Or you can use this one. It doesn't matter. You just need a circle, okay? And what we're going to do is cut out... Well, why don't I use that to show you what... I'll use this to show you what that looks like. So I haven't cut that out yet. I've just got to find some scrap paper. So I'm going to cut that out so we can see what that looks like. Oh, hang on, I think that it's stuck to the tape. Okay, so how it comes, it's it's two pieces, isn't that gorgeous? So that could be a beautiful element on your card. You could actually add that to there if you wanted to. I think that's really sweet. You could actually add that, but I've actually stuck it over my, see I've stuck it over my brad. So it's another cute thing. Anyway, I'm not gonna use it, not this time but I want this, this is the bit I want. And I'm going to use my piecing mat, the piecing tool, find the middle, make a hole. And before I stick that on, I'm going to use three dimensionals. You'll never see this, so it doesn't matter if it's patterned, scrap, whatever. Um, no, I don't pull that off. Yes, I do. Do I pull it off? No, I don't. I can't remember. Did I do that or not? I've gone gaga. 
Okay, so that gets, it doesn't get pulled off, does it? It doesn't matter. Anyway, I didn't pull it off last time. So that gets threaded through this way. That's right. Because it's basically like, sorry, I'm going weird. It's basically like a, a, a washer. Okay, so that just gives this a little bit more spin. And then you can close it. So do not take the sticky off. Do not take the sticky off. I don't think it'll matter, but it just gives it some extra extra um, thickness to spin once it's stuck down onto the card base. So now we'll get our card base, which we have punched out that, that circle. Now, I'll just show you what it looks like if you don't punch the circle out. Just pretend that's not there, the semicircle. You've got that, okay, which is fine, but it's a little bit of work. And I just thought, no, oh, let's do it that way. Let's make life easy for ourselves. So before we attach it down, we need to lift all this up. The quickest way, you can use the super duper long skinny, I can't think what they're called now. Someone will know. Um, I put them away too. I only used them yesterday. You know, the slightly thicker, long, skinny things that we use, like dimensional. Gone silly. Sorry, I've forgotten. I'm just going to use these edges of the dimensionals because they work just as well. They're not as thick or as high, but it's not essential to have it any higher than it is. And... And it's... it's it's quick, it's easy. Dimensionals don't cost that much. I think you can be quite generous with them. And I've just lifted up areas, as you can see, everywhere. And if you've got mini ones, if you have mini dimensionals, use a few right at the, at the start there, just to support the card, because that's where the all the any you know all the pushing and shoving is going to be for the card the meat the work and everything can come off we're going to I'm trying to not be too long to show you I got this last one okay so everything's off and we find the centre of the card. Last, my last one was a little crooked, so I want to make this one a bit better. Okay, so now we've got it attached. So it's, it's, it's just the basics so far. We've got a cheeky little sweet goat to go on the front. I'm going to dimensional him up. He'll just sit there. And we've got three gorgeous fat puffy clouds. So there's no right and wrong where they go. You can still go over the top of this. That won't inhibit the turning mechanism. I did put a, a um, dimensional behind this last one. Not that end, but this end. So he could cover that that little brad. If you don't care about the brad being seen, well, you can put your clouds wherever you like. But I can see these clouds being used for lots of other projects. And um, I didn't show you how I did that cut. I forgot to show you that. I'm waiting for some border, border dies to come. This is an old die, like super old. It's called a large scallop edgelets. And it's just one die in this whole thing. I can't believe I have that. But that's how I cut my little heel. You can hand cut it. You can do anything. But there are some beautiful um, 
um, hills and clouds in another die set. And the die set's called, I'm going to order it, it's called Basic Borders. And like many things, it gets missed and I don't pay any attention. And I had a really good look at it today and you've actually got a nice cloud border and you also have a hills border and other borders and it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna get that and I'll show you when I get it. Okay, so we've got our clouds, we've got our goat, and now we want a little sentiment. So if you do have the goats, it says, happy birthday, you old goat. I think that's horrible. So I don't wanna use that last, <laughs> those last three words. Who wants to be called an old goat on their birthday? Um, so what I've got is, I've got the stamp there mounted up. I've got some washi. And I'm going to cover that, your old goat bit. And this lovely little square die, I've cut out. This is how versatile this, this, these dies are. I've cut it out of this. And it's perfect. So that's what I'm going to use as my sentiment down here. I'm going to use an early espresso and ink it up. Now, don't do what I do and always forget to take off the washi. Take the washi off. Throw it away. You don't want it anymore. You can't reuse it. And stamp. And look at that. You've got the whole, there's nothing. No mess. Beautiful. Okay. Take the washi off your glue before you pick your glue up. <laughs> been a big day loves okay and now I've got my happy birthday you can mount that or have it flat I'm gonna have it flat and because there's a fair bit of air around the card I'm just gonna have it a little bit off the edge just for some interest like so you can add some grass bit of you know, interest there. I've just kept it basic. Now inside the card, I'll need that. I don't often stamp inside the card, but I'm going to. And I'm going to say, you're the goat greatest of all time. So I think that's a bit nicer than calling someone an old goat. <laughs> I don't think that's very nice. And so that's gonna go there. We always want to send something nice, don't we? And this little cheeky goat can just sit wherever you like. Because I coloured him in with blends, he needs to, he can't, he'll, go, he'll bleed through, so he needs to be stuck on. So that, my loves, is very, very basic. You could add some birds, you could add some grass, you could do anything to that card. But I thought, just to show you one example of a fun, a really fun card. For my Christmas getaway, the Christmas in July, this July, I'll be doing one of these cards in your tutorials and it's going to be a Christmas card, Christmas theme. So look out for that. This Wednesday, I've got a card class. Oh, I've forgotten one more thing. This Wednesday, I have a card class and we're definitely gonna be making this one because it's too cute not to. Now, with these little arrows, I've decided to use them. I'm gonna use, this one's not facing the right way for me. His, why have I lost my sticky? He's not facing the right way because he's bending that way. If my message was gonna go, I'm a left-hander, maybe that's why. If my message was going to go up that way, I got you a cake. I don't know, which way do you put it? Can someone help me? Because <laughs> that's looking opposite. So I thought you want the arrow pointing down to say wind down. I probably got it all mixed up and wrong. Anyway, people will work it out when they get it. So I'm going to use the small arrow to show them that they've got to go wind down i've probably got it all wrong anyway that's it my loves i hope you enjoyed seeing that and have a bit of fun if you do get the set otherwise
turn up Wednesday, the ones that are all booked in and ready to go, look out because we'll be having a bit of fun with that. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a nice rest of Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, hello, Sloan. Hello, love. All the way from France. Gorgeous, gorgeous friend. Okay. Au revoir.